the Lord is pouring over all of us. Amen. And this was given to me a while ago. And he wants it repeated. I'm asking you all to come up higher. This will mean fasting and prayer to continually get my perfect will. Yes, it will be a sacrifice. Knowing my will will take a sacrifice to carry to carry out my will. It will be glorious to the healing of my children and to free them up. I will guide you into my truth. Leave man's agenda to do my agenda. Let it happen, my children. It will be glorious in my sight. There will be many jewels in your crown for those who listen and obey. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, Lord, we thank you again yes, Lord. for your presence. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your anointing to preach it and teach it and receive it this morning. Thank you, God. And I confess, Lord, my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. And I will never be the same. Amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Genesis, the third chapter, if you turn there with me. In Acts 17.10, it says, those men in Berea were nobler than the men of Thessalonica because they went to the Word and studied it diligently every day to find out if those things that Paul and his buddies were preaching was true or not. I want you to know that right from this pulpit, well, not this one, because this is better, it's lighter. But from this place, I was deceived by a man. Listen to a man. Did what he said, but I was deceived by him. So if I was you, I'd be like the Boreans. Go home, find out if these things are true. That's right. Because I want you to know, you can't live on TV dinners. Right. Hallelujah. You know TV dinners, all right? <laughs> Television evangelists and things like that, that Kirk Baker. Praise the Lord. You can't live on TV dinners, and you can't live by eating once a week That's at right. church. That's right. That's now, it's a nourishing, and we should come together to right. worship and pray for one another and let the Holy Spirit move. But you can't live on that. Right. You're going to have to get into the Word. Yes. So it says in the third chapter of Genesis, the first to the seventh verse, it says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. God made it. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God says, You shall not eat of it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Yeah. Then the serpent said to the woman, You shall not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree is desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord said, and the Lord called to Adam and said, Where are you? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Hallelujah. And he asked him if he'd eaten of the tree. And part of what I want to say today is, who told you that? Mm -hmm. We prayed for a lot of people this morning because we had believed a lie. Mm -hmm. That's right. We had bought the lie. We had bought things that are not true. Who told you that? That's right. Yeah. Good word. Who told you you weren't this or you weren't that? Who told you? You listen to them guys? Yeah. Are you listening to yourself? Oh, you sorry sucker. You can't do anything right. Yeah. Oh, praise the Lord. Now, if we jump down, oh, we already did that. In 15, it says, and this is what it says, and I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed, and he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. 
Now I want you to know that not only are we given victory over the enemy ultimately, but we are given victory day by day. Yes. Yes. Okay? He has bruised the head of the serpent mm -hmm. at the cross. I want you to know that. And not only do we get this ultimate victory when the time is, time comes to an end and everything like that, we do it uh, a day by day victory. Yes. Okay? Yes. Now in Romans, the 16th chapter, and I'm just going to go by what I've written down. Romans, the 16th chapter. The 19th and the 20th verse says, Hallelujah. 16, 19, and 20 says, For your obedience has become known to all. Therefore I am glad, glad on your behalf, but I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil, or innocent concerning evil. And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we get present victories as well as the ultimate destruction of Satan's yes. kingdom or the kingdom he thinks he had. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. He thinks he's ruled this earth. He is the prince of the power of the air, but I want you to know God is still God. He has not abdicated to the enemy. We gave the enemy authority when Adam fell. Jesus got it back when he went to the cross and died for our sins and raised us back up to a place of resurrection life. Yes. We do not have to bow to the enemy's accusations anymore. Praise the Lord. Yes. So what are some of the things we do to maintain uh, these present victories? And I wrote down here three things. Be diligent, study, and seek. Mm -hmm. Now these things involve a lot of things, but I want some help with some scriptures, okay? Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Proverbs 12, 24. I got it. Okay. And then Proverbs 10, 4. I'll do it. Okay. Um, then Hebrews 4, 10, and 10 through 12. Okay. Okay. So that will be the diligent part. <coughs> I, I got like 37 more, but that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> so Proverbs 12, 24 says, The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. Uh-oh. The slothful or the lazy. Okay. Would you read 27 also? It's sure. just so cool. The slothful man roasts not what that which he took in hunting, but the substance of a diligent man is precious. Ooh, the substance of a diligent man is precious. The, the Bible uh, in my version it says uh, diligence is a precious possession it's a precious possession we have this thing in Proverbs 10 4 what does diligence get us and four four is he who works with a negligent and idle hand but the hand of the diligence makes him right <clears throat> would you read that a little louder <clears throat> four is he who works with a negligent and idle hand but the hand of the diligent makes him rich. The hand of the diligent makes him rich. I want you to know that, it, anyway, you know what it means. Hebrews 4, 10 through 12. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from his own work, just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter the, that rest so that no one will fall by following their example of disobedience. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. Amen. It penetrates even to dividing <coughs> soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. So it says be diligent to enter that rest. Now this is not a, a works thing. We are to enter the rests where we are hearing from God, depending on God, yes. uh, walking in the spirit all the time. It says be diligent to do that. Yes. You've got to work it out and try to do this and try to do that and things like that. You don't have to trade up. Come oh, on. God, if you do this, I'll do that. That is That's not right. a legitimate prayer. No. No. Okay? That is bargaining with God. We do have to bargain with God. And also, it says the Word of God is sharp, which brings us to the place of study or the Word. So in, I want some more help. 2 Timothy 2.15. Help me out. Okay. Okay. John 8.32. 
Let get that one. Uh, Psalm 19, 10 and 11. Go ahead, uh, Wojtek, if that was you that said that. It was Wes. Okay. John what? Uh, Psalm, 19. Psalm 19, 10 and 11. And, um, yes. Okay, do that. In 2 Timothy 2.15, Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Ooh, man. Yeah. Study to show thyself approved of God, the workman. You notice the words work and workman and be diligent and things like that. Okay, we are to enter the rest. But how do we enter the rest? Study to show thyself approved. Now watch this. Now watch this. In John 8, 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. So as we study, what happens to us is we gain knowledge. And knowledge, mixed with wisdom, brings life. Hallelujah. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. What kind of truth sets you free? God's truth. That's right. But the truth you know. You shall right. know the truth and the truth shall make you free. If you don't know the truth, then you can't be free. Come on. Yeah. In other words, that's why we study to show ourselves a proof that we might know the truth, that we might be free. Yeah. Hallelujah. You cannot get free unless you get into the Word. Yeah. It's really important. Yeah. We've got to mix up, we've got our priorities mixed up sometimes. In uh, Psalm 19, 10 and 11, More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, and the honeycomb. Mm -hmm. Moreover, by them your servant is warned, and in keeping them there is great reward. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So the precepts of the Lord are greater to be desired than gold, mm -hmm. than much fine gold. Mm -hmm. yeah, than much fine gold. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So, in Matthew 15, 9, I'll get that. In 15, 9, it says, in vain they worship me, teaching the doctrines and the commandments of men. They People draw near me with their mouth, honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. You can get all this knowledge in your head, but if you are pressing in to know the Lord yes. who gave them to you, then they do nothing for you. It's just That's a book. Right. That's right. It's yeah. just a book. It's important because we walk not by what we see, but what, 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 what we believe. And the Bible says that... Um, it is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And to the rest of God, the Holy Spirit is there. Now, the third part of this little study is to seek. In Psalm 63, 1, it says, I will seek you early. I need Deuteronomy 4, 29. I'll do that. Okay, Psalm 27, 4 and 8. Mm -hmm. I'll do that. Proverbs 8, 17. Got it. Isaiah 55, 6. Okay. Okay. So in Deuteronomy 4.29, I like this one. I'm not there yet. Okay. It's just past numbers. Yeah. 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 Praise 4, the Lord. 4.29. But from there you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. If you seek him with all your heart and all your soul, yeah. what happens? You'll find it. Yeah, right. That is the coolest thing, man. I just love that. In Second Chronicles 7, 14, it says, If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from the wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. <laughs> Hallelujah. Enough griping about our country. Start crying out to God for your country. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody can do the obvious. Okay, in Psalm 27, 4, and then 8. One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, Ooh. to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. Yes, and then 8. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek the Lord told him, seek my face. Mm -hmm. What did he say? Your face, Lord, will I seek. Mm -hmm. That needs to be our, our heart cry. Mm -hmm. Lord, I seek your face. What you're telling me, I'm doing. Uh, there's a word that came this morning in prayer 
it was, a, it was, it was God was saying that things have changed. Yeah. It was like a different dimension, a different universe, an uh, alternate universe we're entering into. It's not a big thing, but it's it's a new day. It's a new thing. It's a new time. It's a new season. The old things, and I'm going to get to that down here, but it, it, the old things are gone. So in Isaiah 55, 6, this is really good too. It's about the same thing as... Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Ooh. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Now I want you to know that the people that you run into uh, sometimes are speaking things wrong about themselves. Other people are standing next to them talking. And what you need to ask sometimes is, is uh, who told you that? That's a good word. Yes. Who told you you were yes. off kilter? Who told you you were a bad boy? Who told you you were uh, this and that? Who told yeah. you? What were you believe? And you can speak the word of God into heathen people. Yes. Into heathen people, people. Yes. <laughs> you can do this. You can speak the word of God into people. You don't yes. have to let you don't have to let a lie go out. If you uh -huh. hear the lie, I think it's almost our duty yes. to stop the lie or at least say yes. something again. Who cares what they think right. of you? Right. What are you right. bitten into my no, business? Right. I said I just didn't want you to get lied to. That's right. That's good. And people yes. see or care for them. People say, well, why would why would you care? Why would you say that? Because God has told me that I'm not that. Right. Especially if it's something you can really relate to, and that's usually where God will set you up. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says in Matthew 7 7, it says, Seek and you shall find. Right. Okay, right. seek and you will find. In other words, Isaiah 55 6 was right. Mm -hmm. Seek the Lord with your whole heart. Uh, in this diligence thing, uh, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9 27, he says, I buffet my body to bring it into subjection, lest after I have preached the word of God, I might be disqualified myself. In other words, he says he brings his body into subjection. And Paul, through the whole New Testament, all the books he wrote, he's always talking about his body being not his enemy so much as he had to bring it into subjection. Yes. The flesh wars against the spirit, spirit against the flesh. We need to bring our flesh into subjection, our minds into subjection. Okay, we can, now I wrote down here again. You can't survive on TV dinner. Okay. In Acts 2.42, what was the thing they continued in? They continued steadfastly. That's right. In the Apostles' Doctrine, in fellowship, in breaking of bread, and prayers. And if you want to get online and find out what uh, Rick Fair <coughs> preached on those, it's a great sermon. Okay? I think he spent four weeks on it. But... They were steadfast. They continued steadfast. And in other words, they did it all the time. Yes. They continued in the apostles' teaching. They continued in fellowship. And here we are in fellowship. In the breaking of bread, potluck. Mm -hmm. And communion, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but potluck, in fellowship and breaking of yes. bread, Absolutely. and in prayers. Yes. Hallelujah. What did we do this morning? Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. It's just, Jesus. just wonderful stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, some of the words I wrote down here, what are some of these diligent things, these, these study or seek? Uh, words in the Bible, fight, <laughs> the good fight. The farmer sows, okay? The body is built up, build one another up. These are action words. They're faith words. They're something that we do. We can fight. We can sow. We can build. We can bind. We can loose. Things like that. Hallelujah. Amen. And then in Philippians 2.8 it says, <coughs> think about these things. Think about these things. So I wrote down here, think about what you are thinking about. I think I got that from Joyce Meyer somewhere. Think about what you are thinking about. If you're thinking about the wrong things, think about what you're thinking about and don't think it anymore. That's right. Change your mind. Praise the Lord, change your mind. Sometimes we've got to think about what we're thinking about. That's right. Woo! Proverbs 23, 7 says, For as he thinks in his heart, mm -hmm. so is he. Where your thinking goes, so goes your life. Mm -hmm. Ooh, right. boy. Mm -hmm. Life doesn't straighten out until you straighten out your thinking. Right. Yes. Nothing will change until you change your thinking. That's your exactly feelings right. don't change until you change your thinking. Yeah. You're not going to change your feelings. AA says, think and take it. 
Yeah. Not stinking feeling. Yes. I know I say that almost every week, but it's true. Yes. And I wrote down here, use your weapons. Use the word. Yeah. Use praise. Yeah. Use prayer. Use your seeking. Use your study. Use these things. Hallelujah. In Zechariah 4, 6, it is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Seek, be diligent to enter his rest. Because there is a rest for the people of God. Amen. You'll notice that those who have a merry heart are the ones who are at rest. And a merry heart does good like a medicine. We need to change up the way we think. Praise the Lord. Now I know, in, in fact, in some of our cases, pain is so present. I didn't realize pain until I had some. <laughs> you don't understand pain until you have some. That's right. You don't understand a lot of pain until you've had a lot of pain. <coughs> okay, so that can really distract your mind. Mm -hmm. it just it can take you right off, and you, that's why we call our brothers and sisters. You know, what's God saying to you today about me? You know, can you tell me something good about God? I've called my wife at times. I've told you this. I call my wife up, honey. Tell me something good about God, man. I'm having a bad day, yeah. and she'll she won't hesitate. She just starts in. You don't have to hit. You just start in. That's right. Start prophesying. Start yeah. speaking the word of God. You know scriptures. Yes. You'll be amazed how many scriptures you know. Yes. I'm serious. You'll be oh. amazed how many scriptures you know if you just start talking them. That's right. Regina and I spent 20 minutes one day driving along in the car. What's your favorite scripture? Go ahead. Big comes up and still feeling destroyed with Christ and his life and that life. John 10:10. 10, 10. 10, 10. And then I did one. Then she did one. Then I did one. Then we did. Mm -hmm. we went back and forth for yes. 15, 20 minutes. That's cool. How does that? What? I didn't think I knew that many scriptures. Mm -hmm. Holy cat! You know them. You know them. They're in there. Praise the Lord. The other thing we need to watch out that we don't quit. Galatians 6, 9. Yes. And let us not grow weary in well-doing. For we will reap if we faint not. Amen. I wrote down here, don't be lazy in your thinking. Don't quit. Don't try this for a week and stop. Don't try praising the Lord for three days and say, well, that didn't work. No. What, what is God not worthy to be praised every day? Right. Every minute yes. of the day? Yes. So every right. situation we come into? We don't do this for our benefit. Right. There's another word that came forth today. It's not about us. It's not about you. It's not about your feeling. It's not about your little thing you're going through. Right. It's not about that. We need to feel for other people. Yes. We need to sense that Holy Spirit uh, uh, empathy yes. for yes. other people and let our hearts go out and grab a hold of God for them and stir right. up our faith to take hold of God. Amen. Okay, It's easy to quit and go back. And I wrote down here, but at what cost? Yep. You go back, what is the cost of going back? Yeah. My God. I've been there. I've got the hat. I ain't going back. I, you know, what does that song say? I, I Whatever it says. I forget what it said. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, it's not a, I'm not going back. Fall like fire, so black rain. I can't remember the first verse. Okay. I will never be the same again. I, I never return. I close that door. That's right. Those doors you close, don't back open. Don't open them up again for crying out loud. It's harder the second time to quit than it was the first time. It's true. It's a good word. Okay. Okay. It's easy to quit. Okay. Deuteronomy 30:19 it says choose life that your descendants it, that you and your descendants may live. Yeah. Some people say I love my kids, but they won't straighten them out. They won't help them out. They won't discipline them. I love my kids, really. So have you chosen life or are you back in your old thing again? If you're back in your old thing again, you hate your kids. Mm. Right. If you aren't straightening them out when they're young especially mm -hmm. and training them when they're young especially, you don't, you don't love your kids. Mm -hmm. You hate them. The Bible says if you don't discipline your kids, you hate them. Right. It doesn't right. say you don't like them or you're not doing right. It says you hate them. Mm -hmm. In other words, you're going to send them to hell if you don't <coughs> teach them how to function. Praise yeah. the Lord. Now go to Deuteronomy, the first chapter. I would read it like this, so I'm going to read it instead. Deuteronomy 1. I like this because these people have just come out or just going out of the, of the wilderness. Okay, they're in the wilderness. And in Deuteronomy 1, Deuteronomy 1, this is good. 
Deuteronomy 1, the second chapter, says, It is 11 days' journey from Horeb by the way of Mount Seir to Kadesh Barnea. Okay? That means when they left Egypt, they could have got to the Promised Land in 11 days. <laughs> They've been wandering around the desert for 40 years. 11-day journey. Not like us. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> now, jump down to the sixth verse, and it says, Yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. All right. Almost 41 years. Yeah, that's good. I never thought of that. And the Lord our God spoke to us in Horeb, saying, You have dwelt long enough at this mountain. I believe that's what God has found us today. You have dwelt long enough yeah. in that mountain that yes. is in your way. You have yes. dwelt long enough there. It's time to that's come good. on out into the uh -huh. promised land. Amen. Hallelujah. I just love that part. It, uh, that He says, 11 days journey, spent 40 years, all right, long enough. I think that's really and truly what God is saying today. Long enough. Yep. Yep. Amen. It is high time. It's time. It is high time yes, it is. to get the heck out of that one and come on into the new Amen. one. And don't you dare let the enemy lie to you that you tried this and you come back and I just can't do it because I'm... The, the Bible says in Deuteronomy 7.22, it says, Little by little, little by little you shall go into the land and take the land. Because if you took it all at once, you wouldn't be able to rule. You wouldn't be able to function there. So he says, little by little. So this might take a little time to get your mind back where you're supposed to be. Little by little. God, line upon line, precept upon precept. This doesn't happen overnight. Well, I, that's what I like. That's what I like too. Yeah. But it hasn't happened that way. It takes study. It takes seeking the Lord. It takes praising the Lord. It takes doing what we've been taught over and over and over and over. Yeah. Hallelujah. Okay. Seek, study, be diligent, pray, praise the Lord. Don't do the stuff you know to do. Think about what you're thinking about. Is that good? Yeah. Think about what you're thinking about. See, address. <coughs> All right. Got to go get his grandkids. Okay. And I wrote down here. Um, joy brings happiness. Happiness does not bring joy. That's right. Yes. Joy is a choice. Joy is something you decide to receive by faith from the Lord. Yeah. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Right. Right. Anything that is God's is given by grace and you receive by faith. Amen. By faith you are saved through faith. Yes. By grace, by anything you receive from God is by faith. So joy is a choice. Happiness, or happiness is something you receive after you receive joy. Happiness comes. You don't have to try to be happy. And by the way, nobody else can make you happy. That's right. And nobody else can make you sad uh -huh. or upset or weirded out. Nobody else can do that. It is a choice to be upset about what people say. Yeah. Nobody, ain't nobody, Nico, gonna steal my joy. That's mm -hmm. right. Chris and Bill sing that. They say they can't sing, they can. Ain't nothing there, ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. And they just said, I can't. Praise the Lord. <laughs> okay. Oh, in First Peter, I want to go to one more here. First Peter. I'm not going to spend long keep you guys here forever. First Peter, the fifth chapter. Oh, that's good. One. The fifth chapter, the tenth verse. Oh, let's go back up one because I like this one. It's talking about the enemy. It says, resist, resist him. Steadfast in the faith knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Jesus Christ, after we have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. After you have suffered a while, after you have stood the test, after you have stayed in faith, after you have stirred yourself up to take a hold of God, I want you to know that, that um, what's that thing I said? Um, uh, God is still on the throne. That's for sure. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, discipline is what we do when our passion is gone. 
Discipline is more important than motivation. You may not feel motivated. You can always discipline yourself to go mm -hmm. by the Word of God. That's right. If you wait till you're motivated, you probably won't do very much for God. <laughs> That's right. You got to right. press in and do this stuff. Discipline is what you use when your passion is gone. Now, I told you last week you got to get passion back. Yes, but what gets passion back? By doing the discipline. That's it. Hallelujah. I like it. There's something I can do about this stuff. I'd hate it if it just oh yeah, you know. Okay. In Psalm 42, 5 and a hundred other places, why are you cast down within me, O oh my soul? Yeah. You shouldn't yet praise him and the help of his countenance. Praise the Lord. Why are you cast down within me, O oh my soul? I'm going to praise the Lord again. This is going to happen again. I'm going for it again. I went up to the house of God and magnifying God at one time. I'm going to do it again. Hallelujah. Why? Because I'm diligent. I'm pressing in. I'm seeking God. I know that I'm going to do it. You guys, it doesn't matter what you're going through at this point in time. That is not the point. That's right. The point is, the point is looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, yes. who for the joy set before him endured the yes. cross. That's right. He despised the shame, but he endured the cross for the joy set before him. He didn't like going through it. He despised the shame hanging up there naked. They didn't put a loincloth on him. They hung him up there naked. He was before the whole world naked. It was, it was not okay. 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 Discipline breeds discipline. If you're disciplined in one area of your life, it will breed discipline in others. The way I got this was from uh, uh, Karen. I meet with those pastors on, on Tuesday morning, and Karen said she changed her diet because her, 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 her body was going crazy on it. So she had to change her diet. She actually had to do it because it was destroying her life. Mm -hmm. So she changed the way she ate. That was all she did. She just changed her dietary. It wasn't a big deal. There's something she does <coughs> eat, there's something she does eat, and that's it. It's not a big, what, oh my God, I gotta go on a diet. It's not that. It's a change of lifestyle. You right. simply don't eat this, and you do eat that. Uh, Wes and Jamie and their family, they don't eat uh, gluten. Gluten-free, <coughs> gluten-free, hallelujah. That's one area of discipline that creates discipline in other areas. Right. You can ask them. That's right. Praise the Lord. So if you ha don't have any areas of discipline in your life, get one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Get one. We used, to, we used to memorize a psalm a week. I was working 10, 12 hours a day, so don't tell me you haven't got time. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I was teaching Sunday school with a girl and another guy, and we decided we we're going to memorize a psalm a week. So we memorized a psalm a week, and we had to say it to one another when we got there. And we did it. I didn't think I could memorize anything. Mm -hmm. I thought I was stupid. The teachers gave me tests to fail, not to pass. I figured I was a dummy. But I wasn't. And you have the Word of God and the Spirit of God dwelling inside of you. You are not a dummy. That's right. So get a place of discipline in your life, even if it's just something we're little. Change the way you eat. That's Change right. don't One, something. Change something. <laughs> I wrote down here, the enemy will try to beat us out of the truth. Cause us to believe a lie. Yeah. Yes. Or, and I wrote down here, or he'll try to beat the truth out of us. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. He can do. He will do it. He tried to beat us out of her to beat it out of us. Okay? Yes. And I wrote down here again. Who told you that? Don't believe that. It's a lie. Genesis 1. So in Psalm 139.14, Get there before me, just go ahead and read it. Psalm 139, 14. I will give thanks and praise to you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and my soul, soul knows it very well. Okay, the next time you feel really bad about yourself, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. That's right. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then in Psalm 46, 1 and 2, it says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, I will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountain be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. Woo! Glory to God. 
That's a song we sing. I didn't even know that come out of the Bible. Mm -hmm. you know that? <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> Though the map. Da -da -da. All right. So Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the word that tells us who you are, who we are. And Lord, we are we're done with the lies. We're done with the lies. We prayed some of them out today, and the rest we're just going to change the way we think about things. And I thank you, Lord, that we can feel your presence. And that comes after thinking the right thing. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your presence among us. We bless you today, Lord. I pray for your people in this place. I pray your, your uh, grace upon each one of us, Lord. Grace, grace to those mountains that stand in our way. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Matt, can I share something? Go ahead. Well, since I sat down after prayer this morning, Hallelujah. the Lord took me someplace and told me to look. So throughout the entire morning, I've had Psalms 46 earmarked to share. Hallelujah. Which you ended. That's great. Hallelujah. So I'm going to take liberties to read a couple more verses. Good. Seven. The Lord is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come see the works of the Lord who brings devastation on the earth, who makes wars cease throughout the earth, shatters bows, cuts spears to pieces, and burns up the chariots. Number ten. Stop yes. your fighting. And know that I am God, exalted among the nations, exalted on earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our strong God. Now, that was a, re a remembrance to me. For the things that I was prayed for, prayed over, and blessed with this morning. Okay. The stop. I don't know what exactly I'm supposed to stop. In all honesty. But stop the stinking thinking must be part of it, you know? And you, and you know, it is physically painful to stop certain thoughts. I mean, it is a physical manifestation of pain in your body to stop certain thoughts. I mean, you. this is not, sometimes it's not an easy deal. Mm -hmm. Like Chris was saying to whoever was up here getting prayed for, if you have to go down the street, stomp on your feet and say, no, I reject that. I am a child of God, in the family of God. I thank you, Lord. You fill me with your spirit, da, da, da. You have to say that all the way down the block and yell it out, go ahead. That's right. It doesn't make any difference. Yep. Who well, you got to impress. That's right. Right. Seriously, people don't think that much of you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Just ask them, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So, Lord, again, we thank you for allowing us this privilege of giving to you. We thank you for that harvest party the other day, God. There were people set free in that yes. place. Miracles happened there. The Word of God was preached and little things that remind people of what they went through there. We thank you, Lord, for... Uh, Everybody that was out there, I pray you bless each one of them, Lord. And those who couldn't come, I pray you bless them in Jesus' name. Yes. We thank you for this, Lord, and we give as unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to, in regards to uh, the harvest party, it was, I think it amazed me and a lot when some people's first question was how much does it cost and I tell and, and I, I told some of them all the joy you can handle all right all right or all like the that. fun you can all right all the fun you can have that's cool because there were people that had searched and they came by out of uh, 
God's leading. Yeah, amen. Because they didn't know it was here. They'd never heard of it. You know, one couple with their kids come all the way from Silver Springs looking for some place that they could take their kids. And I had watched them. They had knocked on doors all down Center Street. And they when they got wow. my house, they just walked on by because yeah. there's something going on over here. Yeah. <laughs> and the joy that they they received because yeah. there was some place for their kids yeah. to and and the parents too. There had to be five hundred people when you came through. We figured it out because of the pantry and we understand numbers. Uh, there had to be five hundred people at least. Wow. They came through, parents and kids. I told you the year before we had this, one kid came to our door. It was it was our cousin. Some, somebody I think it was you know it was our cousin. Kevin, yeah, it was Kevin. Yeah, praise the Lord. So, and then the year we had it, 500 kids came. Wow. It was just the coolest thing. So God bless you all for all your work, preparing, tearing down, setting up. With it, collecting whatever it was. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There was plenty of help this year. Yeah. I want you to know there was plenty of help. Yeah. Praise the Lord. You guys were on it. It was great. And even uh, the cleanup. There was plenty of help with the cleanup. So over over the top. Right. Praise the Lord. So God bless you. Have a groovy day tonight. Tonight we're gonna have a pot. We can have a potluck. We'll clean the house a little. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been kind of busy. Huh? <laughs> what are all them boxes in the Christmas tree about? Oh, yeah. Wait, you guys. This is important. This is important. Shoe boxes, yeah. These boxes are boxes you take home, you fill with stuff, and there's little, um, there's an explanation inside. And we send these off all over the world. And they put the gospel in here, and uh, it'll show you what to do. But this is what we do for Christmas for the world, okay? For the children of the world. And they, you'd be amazed. And we'll show the little video probably next week of, of uh, that stuff. So if you want one of these, it costs you $9, right? Okay, nope. No, it needs to be back here by November 17th. 17th, so that we get it off to the world. Next week. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. So that's plenty of time. No, no, it's next week, so that way we can yeah. forget. And I think it's like nine bucks to send it off to the world. That's nothing. I think it is. I can't read. It's too small. But you take one, and you'll know then. Anybody can. Nine bucks. You can, you know, a cup of coffee costs five. Nowadays, 5.15. These pamphlets here will tell you what you can put in the box. What's that? These pamphlets here will tell you what you can and can't put in the box. It's easy. Yeah. Huh? Directions are in here. Yeah. If you have a pair of glasses, you've got to make it. It's $9. And it's 9 bucks. Put the 9 bucks in there. And, and don't tape it up. Don't, don't tape it up. They're going to open it up, put a little thing in there, and, and then they'll do the thing. Okay? So if you want these, come up and get one. We'll bring them back by Sunday after next. And we'll show the video next week. And if it overwhelms you having to fill the box, just go online, give them the money, they do all of it, and it saves you the nine bucks. You get that? Oh. Say that again, Vicki. If it overwhelms you having to do the putting the stuff in the box, just go online, give them the $25, saves you the $9, they do it all. Wow. They know what goes in the box, they've got it all set up. You can do it online, it takes you a minute and a half. Very cool. So you guys that are online people, there you go. Me, take me three hours to do that. So God bless you all. I'll see you tonight at my house. In the house. Hi.